Hi everyone, welcome. Two videos ago we did a video about the basic installation and configuration of Open Media Vault, as you see in the background now. Um, that didn't went so well, we had some strange errors, but eventually we got there and everything was up to date. Uh, in today's video we're going to play with a virtual box from Oracle and it's a plugin you can install on Open Media Vault and it gives you the option to run virtual machines from your Open Media Vault installation. In my case that's very useful because I can do some load balancing between some game servers and maybe some Windows virtual machines or some testing purposes. You can do a lot of things with virtual machines of course. As you can see in the background this Open Media Vault installation has been running for 22 days straight. And I'm quite surprised how the first installation um, went, that it's still up and running. What we did in the first video is of course set up Open Media Vault um, for basic use and we tested some network speeds and you can check it out in the first video. I will put a link in the video description if you haven't seen that video. And yeah, we created some file systems not only on the RAID array but on the SSD as well. And that SSD we're going to use as a data store for our virtual machines. So the virtual machines will be stored in an image file and that image file will be placed on the SSD. Let's have a look on the file systems. Yeah, as you can see, here we have the data. Um, the data is the RAID 5 array and it has a capacity of 1.24 terabytes, 1.5 terabytes. And it is uh, formatted as extended form. And then we have the SSD and you can see it's formatted as a better FS. We're going to start by checking for some updates because it's been running for a while now and yeah, maybe there were a few updates that we missed so far. So we want an up-to-date system before we get started with any plugins at all. Yeah, there are quite some updates as you can see. I'm just going to install all these updates. I'm going to upgrade them and just let this finish. After this, we're going to install a VirtualBox. Okay, so everything is up to date now. Nice. Let's close this. Reload the page. And hopefully everything will still work. And let's see, update management. Check for updates. And we're all good. You will need this plugin, Open Media Vault Extras. You can download it, install it. I will put a link in the video description on where to find it. Once you've installed this, uh, you can go to plugins and you can search for virtual box. And as you can see, we already have it here. And let's mark this package and let's install this. Do you really want to install the selected plugins? We click yes. And we just let it do its thing. Now, of course, you could put Docker in that virtualization segment as well. We're going to cover Docker in another video. This video is going to be related to um, VirtualBox only. After the installation of VirtualBox is completed, we're going to do the basic configuration of this. Install a Windows 10 VM. And um, uh, off camera, I will install a, a Linux server, Ubuntu server. And yeah, uh, we will have a working... Um, yeah, virtualization environment, and then that's really nice. Um, after the installation is done, I will just put a second game server of mine uh, on the Ubuntu server, and yeah, let's try to run uh, run a couple of weeks from that. Uh, in the meantime, of course, there there could be a Docker video about this. Yeah, who knows? And and once we've configured all of this and really make use of Open Media Vault, then we'll have a really clear picture on how stable and steady this runs. Okay. So, virtual box is installed. We have some warnings, type errors. Close, and we're going to see if it's actually going to run. Let's refresh the page. We'll have to look up some of those errors. If it doesn't work, or maybe we should do it anyway. So, as you can see on the left, on the bottom, you can see virtual box, general settings. Of course, we need to enable virtual box for it to work. Um, but for that, we're going to need a VM directory, and that will be the directory where the VM images will be stored, the data store. So we're going to add a directory for that, and we're going to call this VM data store. Yes, like that. Select device, that will be, of course, my SSD, and the path is VM data store. Well, it will create that folder for me because I gave it the same name. 
Permissions. Administrator. Read wide. Users. Read wide. Well, we already went through this in the other video, and this will be no different. Uh, administrators will have read write access. Users. In my case, I'm the only user. Will have read write access as well, and others. Well, no access. Yeah. Comment, and we'll leave this blank. Just going to save this. So now we have a data store, and. Yeah, we need to apply these settings. Do you really want to apply? Yes. Advanced configuration, show advanced configuration options in PHP VirtualBox web interface. And of course we want that, so we enable this option as well. And what we can do now is we can enable this. And we're going to hit save. And we're going to apply the last changes. Yes. And now VirtualBox is running. And as you can see, we don't have any virtual machines we can start or stop. So we're going to create the first one and the only one for this video. And we're going to do that uh, with the web interface of VirtualBox. And for that, we're going to click PHP VirtualBox. And we're going to log in with our credentials. No, thank you. And we're locked in. And as you can see, this is running on my Xeon E3 1220 with 12 gigabytes of RAM. Um, the Windows VM will get four gigabytes of RAM. And with that, I should have uh, more than enough RAM left over for the Ubuntu server. So we're going to create the first VM. Yeah, let's click on new. And we're going to call this one Windows 10 X64. It will be Microsoft Windows and it will be this one 64 bit next go to give it four gigabytes of ram and let's see we're going to create a new hard drive yes create i'm going with the option on top virtual disk image next and i want a fixed size for that and i want it to be 90 gigabytes it's going to change that for me we just need to drag it. Well, let's drag it. Then we know for sure. And the name for that Windows 10 X64, let's keep it simple. Yeah, let's do that. And we're going to create this one. So this is our basic configuration for Windows 10. And I want to make some changes to this. So I double click on it. And this is the basic configuration. Yeah, advanced. Well, of course, for the snapshots, yeah, fine. Description, not very important. Encryption and input as well. Standard PST, PS2 keyboard, PS2 mouse. System, 4 gigabytes of RAM. Yeah, and we don't need the floppy. Okay, chipset. Uh, yeah, we're just going with the option on top. It's emulation anyway, so. I'm just going to leave this as it is for now. Then we go to processor. And as you can see, it only has one core. And I want four cores for that. Execution cap it may utilize it to 100%. Extended features, we leave this disabled. Then we go with acceleration. Enable a virtualization technology. Well, that's fine. And then we go to display. Video memory, well, not very important for me. And enable 2D video acceleration, not important for me anyway. Remote display, yeah. So we can yeah, manage the installation of the, of the virtual machine. Um, the server port, well, I'm going to give this one, uh, one yeah, so like this, 2110. I don't know why, just going to call it 2110. Net address, this will be the address of my open media fault installation, 192.168.50.2. Authentication method, yeah, none. Authentication timeout, 5000. Extended futures allow multiple connections. Well, that's fine. Storage. Okay, and yeah, CD, and we're going to mount an ISO, but I don't think we already copied an ISO file over. Well, it's definitely not a media, and I think this will land on the USB stick, so I don't want that. I want it in shared folders, and uh, we already created the data store the first time. Yeah, okay. And we have a VM data store now, so we're just going to keep using this. But we need an ISO file. So yeah, um, we're going to log in again. And we're going to create a shared folder for the ISO. 
and I want to have access as a user as well, so I can upload ISOs to that very easily. Yeah, so we're going to create a shared folder for that. Yeah, see data store, here it is, yeah. Hmm. Okay, well, it's already there, but we're not going to use it in this video. Um, add new folder called ISO, and that will be on the data share a folder is called ISO. And administrators will have read-write access, users will have read-write access as well, and others will have no access at all. Save. Yeah, that's fine. Apply, yeah. I want to have access on my Windows clients as well, so we're going to put it on the SMB shares as well. Let's see, add a share, select share folder, that will be ISO, and this all seems right. Yes, save. Okay, so now we have an ISO share and we can put the ISO right in there. Apply, yes. So that means I don't have to set up a SSH connection to the Open Media Vault build. I'm just going to do it uh, yeah, through Explorer. So let's get that screen over here. Windows 10, copy. And well, let's open another tab. Yeah. Um, we're going to connect to our build. That will be 168.50.2. We need to log in. And we have our newly created folder, the ISO folder. And we're going to paste it in here. Yeah, decent speeds. Yeah, I think if we uh, put it in the media fol uh, folder, um, that one is on the USB stick. That's for the open media folder installation itself and nothing else. So we have our ISO and we can continue our journey. We click this little disk icon again, choose a virtual optical disk file. Yeah, I'm going to share folders, going to ISO. And it isn't there, so I think VirtualBox will need access to this folder as well. So we're going to give it read-only access and nothing more. Um, let's go back to our shared folder. Go to ISO, access control list, and we're going to add VirtualBox to the yeah, to the granted list, we might say. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, we have two of them, uh, VirtualBox and VirtualBox users. Um, in this case, I only want VirtualBox to have access to this ISO file, and I'm only going to enable it on read only, and for this folder and subfolders. Yeah, apply. And now let's try again. Let's cancel this, let's try again. ISO, and there we have our Windows 10 image. Okay, so. That's the storage, so we have an ISO file, and yeah, that's good. Uh, then we have audio, well, it's also audio driver, and yeah, that's fine. Network, attached to, well, at first we're going to leave it on that. Well, we can go with bridged, but no, we leave it on that for now. Uh, adapt 2, adapt 3, adapt 4, speaks for itself. Serial ports, not going to use that right now. USB, don't need that either and shared folders. Well, we don't have any shared folders for now for this uh, virtual machine. I'm going to leave it at this. This will be your basic configuration. Let's continue, hit okay, yeah. So now let's start this virtual machine. Okay, yeah. Virtual machine windows has terminated unexpectedly during startup with exit code zero times one details. Yeah, this is getting really annoying. Uh, settings, display, remote display. We're going to enable the server again. That didn't make any difference at all. Nope. I'm going to restart my um, Open Media Vault configuration. And hopefully that will help. Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just going to do that. Reboot. This will take some time. 
Okay, so Open Media Vault is um, yeah rebooted. Um, VirtualBox web service is running, so that's a good sign. And let's go to VirtualBox and then the PHP VirtualBox managing page. Um, Windows 10 VM is powered off. This one is still on localhost, so we're going to change that back. Tried everything to get that error out of the way. Well, that wasn't for sure the answer. Um, network adapter one is on net. Yeah, that's fine. Um, display, remote display, and this will be the IP address of my open media vault build on port 2110. Okay, yes. Let's start this. Yeah. So that seems to be the answer for Open Media Vault. Something doesn't work, just reboot Open Media Vault and yeah. 99% it will work probably. Joke. Yeah, okay, so we have a connection now and console. Yeah, well, we don't have that, we don't have Flash obviously so we're going to use a remote connection for that and we're going to fill in the ip address of our open media vault server with the port number 2110 and we're going to connect through this you want to connect yes and we'll get it over to this screen bam yeah so now we have a working session and i need to download my images in english yeah, as you can see, the mouse pointer is a little bit off. Um, well, we'll manage, yeah, this will work out just fine. Yeah, just going to do the basic installation and I will not bother you with this installation and I will skip this once the installation is all. Maybe the pre-installation is could be interesting. Yeah, let's see if we need some drivers or something, yeah. So it's the basic setup, this is really awkward. Whoa, yeah. Okay, no product key. Um, well, we're just going to install Pro. And sorry for this, but this navigation is really tedious. I don't even know which pointer is mine, this one, yeah. Pro, yeah. We accept, next, advanced. Yeah, it just sees the, um, the storage we created. We're going to create a new partition on that. It will be 90 gigabytes. We'll add additional petitions. And that will be the boot petition, of course. Yeah, and we're just going to install this. I will just let this finish. Uh, once it's rebooted and we're actually in Windows and the pre setup process is completed, um, I will check back with you. So the basic installation is done. And as you can see in the background, my mouse is still a little bit off <laughs> and it's really tedious <laughs> okay so we have a working windows installation so that's really nice so it's now powered off and we go to settings and we go to network and now it's in that and we're going to bridge it and we're going to bridge it to eno1 and that's the network card that is connected right now i'm going to hit ok and we're going to power it on again. And let it start. Yeah. I'm going to connect it. Yeah. Because this is really slow and it doesn't have to be like that. Okay. Yeah. Unknown network. Uh, no, thank you. No. Oh, this is really hard. <laughs> okay, so we have an IP address uh, fifty dot fifty five. Okay. And we go to system. And we go to external desktop. And we 
enable this. Yes. Okay. Advanced. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Really standard. We need a password for this. Yeah. Let's do that then. Uh, yeah. Let's set a password for our user. Accounts. Sorry, this is all in Dutch. It's the only image I have right now. And yes. And set a password. Yes. Just a simple password for now. Test. Yes. Next. Okay. So now we have remote desktop enabled and we can connect through uh, this IP address 50.55. So we're going to shut down this connection and we're going to add a, a new connection and it will be booby trap and password and just connect to that and let's see how that goes yeah this is way better so now we have a pretty more responsive a virtual machine with remote desktop enabled and basically we can do yeah anything we want with this build now so um, yeah this will be a, a test build for example so CPU usage is 7% and memory usage 40% of 12 gigabytes well well that's fine yeah open media fault itself runs well fine at best I can say at this point um, in the first video, we uh, had some errors uh, with creating the RAID array and the file systems on that. Uh, we needed to do a reboot for that and afterwards we could uh, format the disks. So that was a thing. Now with VirtualBox, we have some sort of a similar problem. After the installation of VirtualBox and after creating the virtual machine, it gave us an error when we wanted to start that. And I tried different things uh, to get it working again, tried uh, resetting the network settings, uh, dismount the ISO image, and nothing worked with what I did. So then I decided to, yeah, <laughs> reboot Open Media Vault uh, itself. And after that, I could start the virtual machine. So yeah, th that is a little bit of um, annoying, yeah, to say the least. So um, it is working but not all to my satisfaction. Of course, this is just a Windows VM and I will install my Ubuntu server uh, after this and probably get some game servers on there that I don't want to run on my Unraid build. Um, we have plenty of stuff left to do with Open Media Vault. Um, what I really want to get going with is uh, Docker, um, run Docker on my uh, Unraid build, but I want to run Docker on Open Media Vault as well. This Open Media Vault build will be my backup server. So we need to figure out a way to get the data on my Unraid build over to this Open Media Vault build. And of course, there are plenty more packages we, we can discover on Open Media Vault as well. I will just let this server run, run alongside um, Unraid. And yeah, we'll just get some stuff over here and stuff that's new. I will cover that in the video. And if we come across some errors, you will see them as well. Um, with that, I will leave the video at this. If you have any comments, suggestions, maybe some ideas you want to see running on Open Media Vault, please let them know in the comment section. Thank you all for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.